how do you find out about your, your sweat rate, your concentration of sodium loss? Um, what is the process for those that aren't aware? Yeah. So that um, it's the, the sweat rate is simply um, pre and post weighing. Uh, the yep. best and most accurate way to do it is, is a nude weight. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to be drinking and, and the best, the best time to actually is to do it over an hour session. And for an AFL player, it would be to try and mimic competition day as close as possible. So you would have quite a strenuous session set up. You could even have that break at, um, at half, at sort of halfway through just a short break um, and then continue for that hour um, recording the temperature and humidity and also recording, recording the intensity or, or your exertion level. Cause they're the two things that, dictate how much you sweat what do you need to do is it what, what sort of supplements do you need to do what sort of pack do you need to make to make it specific to your sweat rate and sodium concentration yeah well it's, it's first understanding your numbers that's that's the key um mm-hmm. and everyone has their own unique numbers um it doesn't matter what your teammates doing it, it's it's uh it's very individual so um if if i were if I was, you know, on the outskirts and I was wanting to make a team um, and there were some things that I needed to work on, uh, that these are the sort of things I would work on because hydration makes a massive difference to how you're going to perform, um, not just physically, but mentally as well. Um, how much, how well you can process information, uh, which is super, super important nowadays with the way AFL is played. It's a, it's a very, very different game nowadays. What should they do in the um at half time what, what should they be intaking to in, in, increase their their fueling but also rehydration as well yeah so they it's really going to be dependent on how often the runners get out to them to to provide a, provide a drink and nowadays it's once you kick a goal before you could get out there at any time um but the rules have changed now so you know if there's not too many goals kicked in the half then you don't get too much of opportunity to, to drink which I think they some, somewhat need to address, particularly if they're going to be playing Brisbane, Gold Coast, Darwin, Perth, where it can get quite hot. Um, mm-hmm. Something the AFL need to look at because, you know, if you want players to be properly hydrated and be playing at their, at their optimum level, then they need to be drinking more often, particularly in those hotter environments. But what would be optimal? What, what- you know, what do you think needs to be done to improve fueling? Uh, what are some specific things that could be done better? Yeah, well, uh, I think um, firstly, get rid of lollies. Um, I'm seeing AFL players eating lollies. Um, mind-boggling to me how that ever became a sports nutrition product. Um, it, it's there's There's no... There's absolutely no reason why you would give an elite athlete at that level um, lollies to fuel them. Um, I, I know why they get lollies because Nestle sponsor the AIS and uh, Nestle own Allen's lollies. So um, the sports dietitians are getting their information from the AIS and they're saying, oh, lollies are fantastic. And that's how they've made their way into um, elite sports nutrition which I, I just don't understand how, how that can happen. And it continues to happen. There's elite athletes eating lollies for energy. Do have some control. There's no sponsorship issues for them. Yeah. And they want, they want the optimal, uh, the optimum. What would, what would be the best fueling? Well, um... By far the best fuel are energy gels. And the, 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 the characteristics of an energy gel, um, the fact is it's, it's a food, but it's in liquid gel form. It's, it's pre-digested in its manufacture, which sounds pretty gross, but that's the science behind these energy gels. And particularly the ones that, that I've formulated is that it resembles chyme, which all foods converted to in the stomach. And chyme is like a semi-fluid form. And it needs to be, and all food needs to be converted into this form before it passes through the pyloric sphincter 
into the duodenum and then into the bloodstream as glucose where the, the active muscles and brain can access that glucose, glucose for energy. 